Hello, this month we have a lot of exciting updates, so let's start. Uh, the update of the month is SAP Databricks and it's a big announcement because it was always the problem how to import data from SAP and now we can get Databricks which is ra running in SAP stack and there we can use whole power of Databricks to analyze SAP data and we can also Delta share that data outside. Uh, we can see here that uh, layout uh, looks really familiar. Uh, another update is related to Lakehouse Federation. Uh, Teradata is available now under Lakehouse Federation. So when we go to catalog and we click create a connection, uh, then in connection type we can see Teradata and we can bring it under Lakehouse Federation. Uh, another update is related to clean rooms and clean rooms are generally available and really nice solution is that you can use clean rooms also for data from Lakewas Federation and together with your collaborator so other enterprise you can create clean room and add that data from Lakewas Federation or Databricks data or model uh, to that clean room so it's really nice solution. Another new update is related to dashboards. So when we go to dashboard uh, and we go to data, now in dashboards we can add calculated measures. So it will be measure which will be used in your uh, charts. So in data tab, we can go to calculated measure uh, and uh, give it a name like cost per mile and expression and we can save it as a calculated measure which we then will be able to uh, to use on our charts so it's another improvement to dashboards and there are more and more small also improvements every week so the dashboards are evolving our another update is related to exporting data to excel uh, it was possible to export to CSV, but now also option to download as a XLSX file uh, was added. Uh, another updates which improve collaborations uh, are comments. So if we select, uh, for example, a query or any text, whatever, we can tag a person. and that person will be not uh, notified by uh, by email uh, another update is related to kafka so we have another cooperation it's between uh, confluent and databricks so there will be table flow which will be integrated with databricks so there is operational estate which will be provided by confluent and then you can generate operational data automatically integrated with uh, with unity catalog also related to kafka there are some other updates uh, uh, syncs so it's something like in delta life table you can do something like reverse ctl or save data for example to external uh, delta but i think the solution with kafka will be really popular so you can add as a last step in your dlt pipeline to create sync and to save data there and when we are in Delta Life tables, it's also possible now not to use target schema and just, uh, just to use a schema of our choice in DLT syntax. Another update is related to Google Cloud. Uh, serverless is finally generally available in Google Cloud. And under this link, we can, uh, we can see for which regions. So it's... Uh, really important news for Google Cloud because it's always a bit outdated compared to Azure and AWS. Another update, which is really interesting, uh, it's uh, uh, notebook and files behavior. It was, uh, it changed, uh, I can say dramatically. And now this notebooks, which you can see here, are like just normal files. So it's possible, for example, to programmatically interact with them and, for example, to create another, another notebook. So here we use just a simple Python uh, write comment 
and we can see that it created for us Notebook. Programmatic creation of Notebooks were announced by Databricks, but I found another solution uh, regarding that, which is, in my opinion, really useful, uh, because if you are using a locking module and you add file handler, you can save logs next uh, to your notebooks. So, for example, for development use cases, it's a really, it's a really nice solution because you can go here and just see that our log was generated. Uh, also, because now notebooks are like files, uh, I think it's quite important to use Git ignore and ignore, for example, logs. Uh, uh, table uh, log uh, folder which we just generated. Uh, also, because this is files, you can move now notebooks, drag and drop them. Uh, so all interaction which is with normal files is uh, now possible in workspace. Another update is related to predictive optimization. Uh, there is a small change because uh, now you, even when you disable or enable uh, your predictive optimization for whole account, then you can do this differently for schemas and catalogs. So now default uh, behavior is inherit. So it's inherit uh, settings from account, but you then you can change then uh, that inherited settings by enable or disable. So uh, this, uh, this way it offers more flexibility. Also regarding predictive optimization, now analyze comment uh, is uh, executed automatically by predictive optimization and it generates uh, statistics uh, for your table so then queries are faster. Uh, another update is related to serverless runtime. Uh, when we go to notebook, uh, which is executed on serverless, and we go to environment, we can see that we can allocate more memory to that notebook. So if you have some problems with serverless that there is not enough memory, uh, or you have a, a notebook which requires a lot of memory, you can adjust that setting. But I hope that uh, the setting will evolve and there will be option to allocate automatically. Uh, another update is relating to uh, SQL Warehouse. So we have here some query which is running every, almost every second for the last few minutes. And now we have more statistic in SQL Warehouse. So when we go to SQL Warehouse and we click it and go to monitoring, uh, we can see the number of queries per minute. So it's additional chart. We can see last hour, and we, we can see that our query, uh, which I scheduled, is running almost nonstop. And we can see how much queries were executed in our SQL warehouse. Another update is related to runtime 16.12. So I need to deploy compute with new runtime 16.12, and we'll see some uh, some new features related to that runtime. So that features are not yet available for serverless or SQL warehouse, but are available in that runtime and soon it will be available in other places. So let's wait a few moments uh, for our cluster to start and we'll see what is new in that runtime. Uh, so first update related to 16.2 is, is SQL pipe. So it's new syntax uh, for SQL where it's following semantic order. So it's, uh, it's like a, a objective programming that you first reference, for example, table, and then you reference a filter, then aggregate, etc. So I wrote recently article about that. So I recommend it to read that syntax can give you a headache, but there are a few places when it's really useful. So let's see this using example. So we create table to here temporary view users. And for example, when we want to query, it's enough to reference table and then put filter. So it's we don't use here select, we don't use here uh, normal, uh, normal syntax. Uh, and 
Usually when you are, uh, you are used to SQL, you will not use that syntax, but it's really useful when you want to do something programmatically. So here is one example when we create just string and it's much more easier to create because uh, you know, in the, it's uh, using like different logic, normal logic, how to connect the part of string together. So then it's really easy to pass part of the strings and, and for example, execute, uh, use execute immediate to execute that concatenated string. Uh, another example is if we want to use something like uh, objective programming and we want to uh, convert our object to SQL query, then it's also much more easier to do that uh, because uh, uh, it's you it will use similar order when it, like in object programming so i encourage you to re, uh, read article about that uh, because it can have a lot of interesting use cases another update related also to sql and to creation of the tables uh, is uh, new new auto generated types uh, of function which can be used so there is time time times time stamp difference and timestamp add, which uh, can be really useful in auto generated com comments because columns because you can auto generate, uh, for example, a column which is calculating difference from two timestamp timestamps. So here is example we insert two timestamps and then we have auto generated columns which calculate difference in the menu minute or uh, at some time and the last update uh, it was already in previous runtime uh, but it's uh, i found it uh, recently really useful is uh, collation uh, it's a possibility to to save uh, strings in local formats but also for example in formats which are case sensitive or case insensitive and then utilize this in our queries uh, or ordering of uh, results. So for example, just to give you better understanding of it, here we have standard default names. And for example, we, uh, here we create table which has uh, columns as case insensitive. Uh, so then when we, for example, in a default table, we query for Alice with a capital letter, we'll get only Alice, but we, if we uh, collation is English case insensitive. Then when we query for Alice, we'll get both uh, normal uh, and caps lock version of Alice. Uh, it's one of uh, example, but there are much more. Uh, the most important is great performance improvements when query local strings. So for example, if we are uh, creating table only for, I don't know, East European market or a Greek market, we can use that local alphabet. And then it can be up to 22 times faster to query than that local uh, collation uh, because uh, it will not use whole UTF, but it will use in comparison only that local, uh, local letters. Yes, we can say like this. And he, here we have some examples uh, that, for example, we use uh, Greek alphabet to search for uh, for names. Also, in a lot of uh, alphabets, it's uh, uh, important how to handle accent mark. So here we, for example, ignore it. And in UTF, you would not be able because UTF will uh, consider this as two different strings. And the same with ordering because then it's much more faster to order some in local collation if it, there is only that local strings. Uh, what is important is to generate statistics uh, for, uh, for that uh, localized uh, tables, then it can be qu query faster. Of course, if you have predictive optimization, now analyze command is executed by predictive optimization, so you don't need to do it manually. And uh, that's all updates for this month. Uh, you can find a link to all notebooks uh, which I used uh, for this month demonstration in the description below. 
Uh, thank you for watching and I hope you to see you in my next video.